with us Dr. Ritesh Arya. Dr. Ritesh Arya, a Guinness Book World Record holder, is nominated member of Water Management Board, Government of Himachal Pradesh, and National Institute of Hydrology, Roorkee, Government of India, and featured in science TV serial Turning Point and Big Idea. He has expertise in water, energy, and climate. Dr. Ritesh Arya developed concept of Agni Yodara, free energy for all, in World Geothermal Congress in Bali, Indonesia, 2010. Dr. Ritesh Arya presented Arya Sea Circle Climate Change Natural Based on, Pale on Paleoclimatic Signatures Reference on Global Warming Turkey in 2013. We welcome you, sir. Now I request our student volunteers to felicitate Dr. Arya with bouquet. At last, he sent us. This is the vision. Agne Yodgara. Agne Yodgara. This is the word for geothermal in a language. Energy from lava. And this holds the key for right to free, safe, sustainable water and energy for all by 2050. We have been given free water. We have been given free, water, uh, free uh, energy. And we have complicated the systems to make it so complex. Agne Yodgara holds the key. So what is Agne Yodgara? Is a concept to develop gigawatts of power from lava at shallow depths in geologically favorable locations. Now by textbooks examples, we see that geothermal gradients, if you want to get about 5,000 degrees temperature, we may have to drill about 6,000 kilometers. Or if we want to get five, 600 degrees temperature, we may have to drill about 2,000 kilometers. It is always being radiated from the earth, from the core of the earth. And her earth is not homogeneous. We don't have to drill de greater depths to get 600 degrees temperatures. Earth is heterogeneous. We have plate movements, a lot of plate movements, and the slide previously shown shows that there is always stress which is always being released at convergent boundaries and divergent boundaries. And these convergent and divergent boundaries holds the key for Agni Yodgara sites, the advanced geothermal systems. By exploring these sites, we can get magmas at very shallow depths. And if we can tap these magmas at shallow depths, we can find solutions, both economical and sustainable ways. So what is Agne Yodgara sites. Now, if we see the convergent boundaries, as in the case of India, subsiding below China, there are the, the ample amount of in the Sankusuchi zone. Or if you extend it to Alps, the Alpine Himalayan orogeny holds the key for Agne Yodgara sites. So, this is it the convergent case, the case of India. So as such, the entire India is a Agne Yodgara destination. Divergent case. Now, go to Iceland, and you see this. Now, the, the experiment was to identify magma. They call it in English, and we call it Agne Yodgara. How we can tap magma? So an experiment was done, estimates were for drilling about 4.5 kilometers, but they encountered depth of, depth of magma at about 2.1 kilometers, and superheated streams of about 300 degrees temperatures were obtained by conventional drilling. And uh, convergent and divergent boundaries lead to breaking of rocks, and uh, these could be very favorable, again, sites for Agni Yodgara development, where we can produce maximum amount of power by using minimum efforts. Now, in Indian context, except for Andaman Nikobar, as already been told, this I visualize as the future Agni Yodgara center, where all industries which require huge energies will concentrate. Uh, and uh, other sites in Manikaran, it, it's always an example that we, we can get free food is free food is served 24 hours, 365 days since Guru Nanak visited that in 1500 approximately. 
So that is the concept of free energy, already be given to us by our ancestors. We just failed to just capitalize on it. Now this is traditional uh, hot rock systems and EGS systems which you are talking about inducing uh, a lot of work is being done uh, and uh, still results have to come. Carbon dioxide is being uh, poured into the wells to produce energy but still this is in, in fancy stage. So Agnayodgara sites if you can locate say about one or two kilometers depth for this Again, geologist or Bhugara Vigyani have to come up in a very strong way so that they identify the sites at shallow depths. We don't have to drill uh, deeper depths to get high temperatures. And if we can use not uh, traditional technologies, but this geocogen technology of drilling, you know, since this center is being uh, established as a, a, a geothermal center, or you can, uh, so this drilling technology will enhance the production of wells so if one megawatt, it can increase this uh, production to say about uh, 10 to 100 times more. This is the uh, technology of uh, geocogen, which... Uh, so now, what are the problems associated with uh, this, you know, geothermal drill, uh, drilling? The same problems which oil industry might have faced in the early, uh, early times, we are facing now. Geothermal will... Everybody talks about what is the cost of production of one unit, you tell us, it's not like solar panel, you just produce uh, solar panel and just ask that this is the center and then this is the requirement. It requires a lot of exploration. And if your exploration is not right, if your geological site location is not right, instead of two kilometers, you are drilling about seven kilometers, your entire production will fails. So, that, that investigation, that confidence level has to be built up in geothermal exploration. And once that is done, and a lot of money, if, if the same amount of money initially was poured in for oil sector, same amount of money should come, government should come up with, yes, this is 100 crore, 200 crore rupees for, uh, uh, for experimentation, you know. And even if you fail, then there is no harm, you have learned something out of it. And that is the type of investments which you are looking for. And once this is successful, then oil is a limited resource. This is an infinite resource. Once established, now I'll come out the costing of these. So life of, uh, if you compare it with the runner, renewable sources, life of solar panels, say 20, 25, 30 years maximum. Again, you have to invest that much amount. That is renewable energy, but not sustainable. Economically not sustainable. And then you are talking about nuclear uh, power plants. Our government is staking claim that we don't want government, but we want nuclear power plants. Why? The question is nuclear power plants after Chernobyl and Fukushima, they have nuclear bombs for our future generations. When you are talking about renewability, when you are talking about sustainability, we should talk about safety for our uh, future generations. And safety will come only through geothermal Agne Yodgara development. If that much amount... So if, if, if I ask you one uh, gigawatts of power by nuclear power plant cost how much? It is about 7 billion US dollars, 5 to 5.5 to 7 billion US dollars. And again, recurring cost and the wastage. So it is not free energy. We are already paying huge amount for this. And if that amount is transformed into geothermal industry, Agne Yodgara sites, definitely we will give a safe, sustainable, renewable, green, clean energy for our future generation. A lot of investment is being done on hydropower projects. But what is the future? Global warming taking toll on glaciers in Himalayas. So where are the water going to come from these uh, hydro, uh, hydropower projects? After 2030, maybe 2050. All, see I've been working in the Himalayas for the last 14 years, 15 years. Maximum amount of glaciers in Himalayas have already become extinct or on the verge of extinction. They are not receding. Now, comparison. Just see the comparison. See investments, initial investments in all the technologies. And after, say, about 2050 vision, you see what is the coming up. Geocogen technology combined with Agne Yodgara only gives you free energy for all. Because that is the only investment you have made once now. And forget about the future. Just use energy as it should be, free energy. 
Why you have to complicate the system? Yes, these are transformational energies. You can use it for when sun is... They say that geothermal is not energy available anywhere. I have already made it clear. It is available everywhere. Here also in this campus, you can develop geothermal energy. So, Agne Yodgarad Geochogen is the best bet to produce safe, green, clean, economical energy. Agne Yodgarad sites, abundant oil wells, again could be one of the potential sites. So, just what I was talking about is Lardare Low, Italy. I visited this site when I was thinking about geothermal, you know. I visited this, personally made this visit. From Oslo, I went to Iceland, then went to Lardarello to see what, how did he made the first geothermal plant? Nothing. He just digging by small tools and then he constructed and now you see 5000 gigawatts of power. Till today they are producing 5000, though they have multiplied geothermal wells in that location. But see the cost? This is what geothermal means. Anything, any time, any point of time, there should be no debate on investing in geothermal. Agne Yodgara vision, replace nuclear power plants with Agne Yodgara sites. And that is the safety which we are going to give to our future generations. Geothermal energy is the energy of future. It is green, it is clean, it is economical, it is sustainable. So these are, this is one of the uh, nuclear power plants in uh, Switzerland. Uh, I was there in uh, delivering a lecture on the same topic of, uh, on, in the United Nations, one of the conferences in, uh, there. Best investment. Uh, uh, and then uh, microgeothermals go in for here if you don't have alluvial deposit, just, just go in for uh, geothermal exchange, uh, heat exchange. Pro, uh, wo. Then you can go in for deep geothermal or other sites. There are a number of applications. Everywhere, any point of time, you can develop geothermal energy at uh, 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 any time. And this is this was the story from uh, uh, Agne Yod Garaj Steph towards uh, in, in the press covers, and this is one of the uh, photographs from uh, World Future Energy Summit conference. Our uh, Minister Farooq Abdullah, Dr. Farooq Abdullah, he was there, and uh, the Guardian gave us this uh, top ten. He was among the top ten innovators, and this is so. The world over, we can develop orogenic. These are the provinces which we can develop. And in comparisonly, in Indian context, I have just tried to make it brief. The whole world is full of geothermal energy. Any point of time, it is depending on what type of application you can use. But any point of time, you can use geothermal energy. So these are again uh, already discussed about it. 10,000 megawatt is the normal potential which is estimated. But if you go by Agni Yodgara vision, it could be. 10 times more, maybe 1 lakh or maybe more than that. That is the potential of geothermal. I have tried to make a geothermal map of India. So this is this shows that every point of time, anywhere you can develop this energy. These are the potential sites, Himalayas I have been working on. Now with the problem, when we started was with water, now the energy problem because when we visited this Demchok site and Chumur site, now you are almost hearing this in news. Uh, due to Chinese intrusion, and this has been taking place a lot of time. Uh, Demchok, I was there last year, and then there are some problems there with the... Uh... So, energy, there is free energy available, and uh, we can just tap it. How? We have already made this uh, exper experimentation. Uh, there is a Idnor project, and then studies were made by uh, Indo-Norway joint venture with the Iceland group, and uh, we conducted some workshops also. This is Puga. In, in winters we visited this and this is one of the sites in Puga. You can see that Geological Survey of India did commendable job. But why they didn't do anything? Only in Manikaran they were about to... They, there was a pilot project in Manikaran where they produced 5 kilowatt. They, were, they produced cold storage plant also in Manikaran. But due to landslide there was some problem and then uh, they were not able to do. And I don't know why they... After Ravi Shankaran, uh, Ravi Shankarji, nobody took up this project in GSI also. And uh, this was in... Uh, Chumathang, uh, 2011 we did. This is the site. Uh, this one, this this site was in uh, an Indian context. Uh, you you see that one. That is the site we identified in uh, 2011 and 2000, uh, 2011 and 2012. This is Chumathang already giving a geothermal well at a very shallow depth, and uh, we got temperatures of more than 100 degrees. And uh, this was. Because it is not only the, uh, electricity production, we can, every border area where we are visited, it is costing about 35 rupees 
approximately say half a dollar to produce one kilowatt of power. So we were just looking for alternatives to just uh, transform hot water uh, to, to these military locations. Traditionally we have been using, uh, this is how we have been using our, uh, this geothermal resource since time immemorial. In Siachen, 2011, okay, uh, in Siachen Glacier we were able to uh, locate this hot water spring in 2011. This was a uh, great achievement because, and that also we ensured that we will not charge any money we are not able to give you hot water. That is how we were given this and uh, these are the press con con uh, and this is uh, United Nations International Clean Sustainable Energy signaling victory for Agni Yodhgara in World Future Energy Summit this year. Thank you. Thank you very much for the very interesting uh